Christmas is often. In my previous video, I talked to you about how to count stuff, and today we'll be looking at some ways that we apply this in the field of probability. Probability discusses how likely it is that a specific event is going to happen. So some vocabulary that you should know. We have outcomes. Outcomes are any possible result of what in math is called an experiment, where we don't already know what the outcome will be. So an outcome is any possible result. The set of all outcomes is called the sample space. So again, the sample space, the set of all outcomes. An event is any set of one or more outcomes in a single sample space. So to determine the probability of an event, P, E, we consider the number of ways that an event could happen divided by the total number of outcomes. And for every single event, the probability of that event happening is between 0 and 1. Okay, if we're expressing that as a percent, it's between 0% and 100%. <laughs> number of ways that the event could happen and the total number of outcomes in the denominator. Okay, so probability with some simple counting. Two dice are rolled, and just for the sake of argument, let's say one is red and one is blue. What is the probability that their sum is greater than 10? Well, we're going to consider that these dice have the numbers 1 through 6 on them. And so to figure out my total sample space, my first die could come up six different ways. My second die could come up six different ways. So by the fundamental counting principle, my sample space is 36. That their sum is greater than 10, well, that means that they have to add up to either 11 or 12. 12, there's only one way. They both have to be 6. For 11, you could have 5 and 6, or 6 and 5. So altogether, that's three different ways. 5 and 6, 6 and 5, or 6 and 6. And again, I think it's helpful to think of the dice as being like two different colors, because then you can see that this 5, 6 <laughs> is a different outcome from 6, 5. So my PE is going to be the total number of ways that I could get what I want, sum of 11 or 12, number greater than 10, three ways that that can happen. My denominator is going to be the total number of outcomes, which is 36. I'll reduce this fraction, 3 over 36, to 1 12th, and there's my answer. Another thing to know about in probability is the complement of an event. Now, the complement of an event is spelled the same way as complementary angles. It is the completer. The complement of an event is the set of all other events in the sample space, and it's written as P prime E. Now, since an event either happens or it does not happen, that tells us that the sum probability of the event plus the probability of the complement have to add up to 1. Something's going to happen. Either the event happens or it doesn't. So if we want to find the probability of the complement, we can just take 1 and subtract the probability of the event. Here's an example. There is a 40% chance of rain today. What is the probability that there's no rain? Well, either it rains or it doesn't rain, so it's clear that this is the complement of the event. So to find P no rain, I'm just going to do 1 minus the percent is 0.4. And so if there's a 40% chance of rain today, the probability that it's not going to rain is 0.6 or 
percent. And that's the complement of the event. What's the probability that the event will not happen? Okay, the probability of a union of events. A union of events is when two events happen at the same time. Like, if I want to figure out what is the likelihood that I will draw a card from a standard deck and it will be both a heart and a king. That's two events that have to happen at the same time. The card has to be a heart and it has to be a king. Now, for a union, we want to look for that word or. If you see the word and, you're dealing with an intersection of events. So the way that we notate this is P A U B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection, that and, for A and B. Okay. Now, some events are called mutually exclusive. And for these, the probability of A and B happening at the same time would be zero. To return to our deck of cards example, a card could never be both a spade and a heart if we exclude jokers from the pack. But a card is never going to be both a spade and a heart, so its probability of the intersection would be zero. So we're going to look at the probability of a union of events on our next slide. I draw a card from a standard deck. What is the probability that the card is a heart? I'm going to change this from and to or less than eight. We're going to assume that aces are low. So probability of it being a heart or less than eight is, first of all, the probability that the card is a heart, which is there's 13 hearts in a 52 card deck, plus the probability that it's a low card, and my low cards are ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, those are my cards less than eight, so there's seven of those times four different suits is 28. Now, out of those, I have seven cards that are both hearts and low. So I'm going to subtract those because otherwise I double count them. So seven out of 52. So I'm just going to add my fractions and I get 13 plus 28 minus seven is 34 out of 52. If you want to reduce that fraction to 17 over 36, or if you want to express it as a decimal, that's just fine, but it's perfectly acceptable to leave your answer this way. Okay, again, what I'm doing here is considering the probability of each of these occurring and subtracting the probability of both of them occurring together at the same time. So that's our union of events. And finally, the probability of independent events. So in independent events, one outcome has no influence on the other. So the probability of them both happening together is equal to the probability of one event times the probability of the other. This is kind of similar to fundamental counting principle. For example, let's say that I roll a six-sided die numbers one through six, and I flip a coin. What is the probability that I get an even number and I get heads? We are going to assume a fair die and a fair coin for this problem. So first, even number, that's two, four, six. So that can occur three out of six ways. And flipping a coin, well, it can land either heads or tails. 
So that's 1 out of 2. So when I multiply this, I get 3 over 12 or 1 fourth. Now you'll notice this is that it occurs even numbers and heads. This is different from our previous expression where it was or. So and, here we're looking for the intersection of those events. Both of them will happen. This has been a brief introduction and review of probability, and I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much. Have a great day.